the biological control of boxing glove cactus is a spin-off of my <coughs> official project, which is the biological control of a different weed, um, a chain fruit chola. Here you see the two weeds next to each other. They belong to the same cactus species, Cylindropantia fulgida. Uh, there are two varieties of this cactus. The first one is my official project, uh, Cylindropantia fulgida variety fulgida, which is a tree cactus with uh, very long, dense spines, uh, uh, looks right from a distance, whereas Cylindropantia uh, fulgida var marinata is uh, in our country uh, mostly represented by a, a very smallish um, cactus with crested um, cladodes. That is a chain fruit chala with straight cladodes and uh, normally a, a tall tree. This is in its natural home in uh, Mexico. It also occurs in the southern states of USA. This is what Cylindropantia uh, fulgida varmamilata looks like in its natural home when it is the normal plant. But this is what it looks like in South Africa. The, uh, we have a crested form where some of the cladodes are flattened out like that. Um, and that is what we call boxing glove cactus. The normal uh, mamilata is not really uh, boxing glove. Uh, here are some more differences between the two species. You can see on uh, chain fruit chala the very long spines, long dense white spines, whereas uh, on boxing gloves the spines are much shorter and not as dense. They are also not barbed as far as I know, that, so they don't stick to you as uh, much as the uh, chain fruit chala. Both species or both varieties have hanging fruits. In other words, uh, fruits form a chain. Um, the flower is produced on the first, uh, on the tip of the first fruit, so the next fruit sits uh, on the tip of the previous one. That's the colour of the flower. I've never seen a flower on boxing glove, but there are fruit. In both cases, in South Africa, the fruit has no seeds. So the only way of reproduction is by means of cladodes that drop off the plant and root. There you can see it on chain fruit chala, there you can see it on boxing glove cactus. So in both cases, uh, they reproduce only vegetatively. Um, boxing glove cactus is still um, under the responsibility of the Early Detection and Rapid Response Program. Um, and it happened because uh, when it was uh, when people became aware that it is a problem in South Africa, nobody had any idea about its distribution in the country and therefore it was an early detection target to find out where it's growing. And then at the same time, uh, yeah, well, we'll get to that later, um, uh, infestations um, are mostly in Northern Cape. There are some very bad ones in Namibia. This is also in Northern Cape, but this is well, these three are in Northern Cape in a community called <coughs> Gillen Flay, uh, north of Kuruman, that was only recently detected, but there are about 400 hectares, very densely covered uh, with many different cactus species, amongst which boxing glove is the worst one. You can see how it is encroaching on the gardens. Many of the homes have just been left uh, standing because the cactus goes up to the door and Apparently, the people just leave their houses and, and start a new one. Um, uh, goats have a very difficult time there. The cladodes stick to their mouths and um, cause uh, festering sores. And, of course, that's also a way in which the cactus gets dispersed. Uh, this is just a photo I received very recently from um, Sandy Lloyd in Australia of their worst infestation of the same weed. So this is really an enormous problem. Um, now, fortunately, we had, had, at the time when we realized that boxing glove was a, a problem, we had a potential biocontrol agent in the form of a cochineal species that um, has been released against chain fruit chola and was extremely effective. 
it was a specific biotype of the cochineal. We already have a different biotype of this cochineal in South Africa, which is controlling imbricate cactus, um, Cylindrocantia imbricata. And um, its origin um, is a, a third cactus species, Cylindrocantia choya, in Mexico. So it's a new association. The cochineal wasn't collected from exactly the same um, weed as our target weed, or same plant species as our target weed. And in this case, um, there was apparently no resistance in the plant to the cactus, up to the cochineal, and therefore it did very well. The research of this was done by Helmut Zimmermann and Catherine Masenge, who now um, lives in Australia. She was a UCT student of um, John Hoffman's. And um, she did the host specificity of different uh, biotypes and decided that this one, which we call well, uh, the Choya biotype is the most effective one to kill uh, chain fruit uh, Choya. And because of the close relationship between the two cactuses, the chain fruit Choya and the uh, boxing love, we predicted that it, uh, the same cochineal would be effective in controlling boxing love cactus. Um, this is uh, just what the cochineal looks like. Um, the, the females are covered by waxy substance. That is a, a female from which the wax has been removed. That's the egg that is produced by the female. These eggs hatch and form nymphs. And the uh, first instar nymphs are called crawlers. And they are the stage that can disperse from one cactus plant to another one. Um, the male nymphs or crawlers eventually produce something like a cocoon and they, um, when they are mature they have two wings so the males can disperse and find females whereas the females just sit on the same cactus plant for their whole uh, lifespan and only produce eggs. Um, it was first released against chain fruit chala in 2008 and was extremely successful um, as far as cochineal biocontrol goes. It was a very fast success and also a total success in the um, sense that very little living plants were left. That's the release site in November 2008 and by June 2010 the same site had absolutely no sign of living cactus left. So this was on the original cactus uh, chain fruit chala. Uh, when we made a test release against it, uh, against um, boxing glove, I wasn't present. I, I sent the stuff off, and Sean um, Cosette and uh, Trevor Shiburi were so good to release them for me. And after less than a year, all the plants there were looking like this. All the little cladodes lying on the ground were already attacked and remember the little cladodes are the, the only way, the way in which this cactus uh, disperses. Already uh, the natural enemies of cochineal had found it, unfortunately. Um, and there you can just get a view of how dense the, or how, what, how, what big numbers of cochineal were present on the plants. And this is the right stage to re um, distribute them because there are lots of crawlers on this picture. Um, we um, cannot expect this pro a project to be without problems. Um, although I showed you a, for chain fruit chala, we had some problems with the size of the plants that they had very uh, woody stems and those woody stems were resistant to the effect of cochineal and I'm expecting that the same thing might happen with a uh, boxing glove cactus. Although the plants, uh, well here you can see uh, chain fruit chala plants in Douglas. Um, this is the successful uh, story where all the cladodes are uh, falling down, most of them are lying on the ground and there's cochineal on all of them, that's the success. But that's only for small plants. There you can see if the plants are bigger when they get attacked by cochineal, um, most of the cladodes lower down on the plant will drop, but uh, during the rainy season, um, most of the cochineal washes off the plant 
and that gives the cactus an um, opportunity to uh, recover and there you can see the white cladodes, that, those are newly produced cladodes. So this is what I expect might happen to um, boxing glove. We overcame this problem in chain fruit soya by waiting until the plants were well infested with cochineal and then slashing them. Here you can see a slashed plant, um, that part has died, there was some regrowth but that was in the beginning. On this graph you can see the light green part is um, everything that has died um, and the dark green is what still remained alive and you can see there's hardly anything alive <coughs> two years after slashing. Whereas this plant which was as much affected with cochineal as that one but was not slashed Instead of um, dying back, it has only grown larger and you can see that in the dark green sections, the dark green sections have become bigger and bigger. So, it, unless you slash the plant, um, the effect of biocontrol will not be um, total. So, in, the, in view of that, my recommendation <coughs> would be that we follow an integrated uh, strategy with uh, boxing glove cactus. Wherever the plants are very big and have woody stems, I would recommend that you um, use the slash method. Um, the most important thing to watch out for is that you, when you redistribute bio, um, the biocontrol agent <coughs> cochineal, that you collect it from exactly the right plant species. Um, because there is a lot of cochineal out there in the northern um, and eastern Cape, some of it will be the right uh, cochineal species, Dactylopius tomentosus, but it will be the wrong biotype because it might come from imbricate cactus. There is lots out there that we don't know where it's coming from. I am doing work on that, but uh, uh, Trevor, whenever you are redistributing, you must make sure that you only use cochineal that you know where it comes from. It's only the stuff that you collected at OSCOM and you must keep track of where you've redistributed and only collect that stuff for further redistribution. And then, as I say, if, it's, if the plants don't die, um, you can wait until they've got enough uh, cochineal and then slash them, and they should then um, succumb. Okay, um, I'd like to acknowledge funding from Working for Water and research done by Catherine and Helmut. My, um, um, assistant technic um, Joel Mabocha and then also the EDRR team who have been very good in redistributing the cactus already. Thank you very much. One quick question for Helenet. I would appreciate question and commencement. <laughs> Hmm. No comments to the team. You look at the ERR program. I think uh, it's quite important that the, 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 from from management side, and I'm not sure if you this, uh, around how we, oh, yeah, how we can work around this. He's quite aware of the challenges that we had in the Northern Cape. Uh, it would be nice to see uh, Philip in terms of the branding for the, the, for the big man to, to know that we won't repeat. The, the mistakes that we did, but it's quite an interesting uh, project that we that can save us costs in terms of website for this. Yes, um, I'm not sure how we're going to get go forward with this, but I will be attending the DWOT meeting in Kimberley, and um, hopefully all the role players will be there, and then we can decide. Um, whether it, the project stays with EDRR, goes to working for water, who's going to do mass rearing, uh, probably Marietta and Warsaw in Newton Hay. Mm. But um, yeah, we will need lots of cochineal for Yenem's Flay and um, there will have to be a mass rearing station somewhere. And, and I think let's discuss who will be in the best position to do the um, physical redistribution. If that's not, thank you. Then we'll have our next speaker.